out here. And that was when I was in school, when I was being assessed and assigned to certain tasks within my working environment. It's like a little tiny job, right? Every year they would do these assessments, they would write down what it was that we were good at and what it was that we were bad at. Now, when it comes to being a star seed or an indigo child, you don't quite fit in. And I'm about to make that abundantly clear within this. And a farm. Record of Ryan Cropper's achievements. Let's just see how different we really are. But first, what is a star seed? And what is an indigo child? Now, your soul is composed of light. These light spectrums really do distinguish the way that you think. It singles you out from everyone else because your frequency of thinking is completely different. Now, the light frequencies within your soul arrange your motion of consciousness. They allow your consciousness to move within a specific area of your body to better express your expression. I talk about this on my YouTube channel, the spatial awareness points where when your consciousness resides within certain areas of your body, your consciousness does behave differently, i.e. when your consciousness is downstairs, your behavior patterns, the energy itself molds and chooses the thoughts for you. When you're unconscious or unaware of this energy, it's a bad thing, as you can tell it would be a problem, you're not entirely in control of your own mind and you are completely at the will or the mercy of the other consciousness constructs, the other systems of thought that reside within your body that can intervene within your daily rational thinking whenever it chooses to. So when you're an indigo child, you come into the earth with the ray of indigo, purple, violetly purple. That ray of light is abundantly obvious when you come into 3D. Your characteristics are quite different from the norm. You're often really creative when it comes to creative arts. You often single yourself out from other people because you're not quite understood. This is all due to the astrology or astrological signs. Whatever you're born into tends to depict the energy that you admit. You all know this, the Taurus and the Aries and so forth, but it does go deeper. And that is when you get into star seeds, beings of light, which we all are that come from other areas or other points of space, other dimensions where other existences exist already and have their own way of being, their own way of thinking and behaving. And it is these beings that incarnate which have a completely different structure of light. And when that is expressed within this 3D body, we tend to behave differently. Now, if any of this has made sense so far to you, continue to watch this video and I'll tell you the record of achievements, the assessments of my personal development, my character throughout the years of school when I obviously didn't fit in. It's the first one. Personality relationships. Oops. And it's lucky I made these in school. I have the memory of that. I have a lot of memories nowadays. Here we go. Personality relationships. Just to show you that this is actually there and I'm not making this up. <laughs> Brian is very quiet in class. He does not form relationships easily as he has great difficulty making himself understood. This is a common trait within star seeds. We often think completely different, on a completely different wavelength. We look at things, situations, and people completely different compared to how another person would. And this often carries on throughout our entire lives, which can be a huge problem because no one wants to be misunderstood. We see things completely differently. And because we come from a different star system, we don't have the original programming of 3D, the insecurities, the vulnerability when it comes to easily being influenced by things on TV or word of mouth or popularity and so forth. It's harder for us to come into these mundane, norm ways of thinking because we're not used to acting like that, period. And this will persist and continue to be like that for our entire lives until we understand the original programming of the matrix, society, the way other people often think. And then we can either relate to that or just by understanding that, communicate to them on their level. But as a star seed, it's very, very difficult, especially within your early ages of your life to be understood or even to understand other people for a while. That is until your pineal gland bursts wide open and then you can see through everyone. People call it the BS detector, you know, the bullshit detector, where you can look at people 
and you can tell if they're lying, you can tell if they're insincere and the reason why you can tell this is because you can feel their consciousness not just the one up here but throughout their entire body so if they feel a bad feeling about you or they know they're lying and they can feel it within their gut that they're lying an empath, a starseed, an indigo who's vibrating on the violet spectrum of light so their pineal glands can be wide open is going to feel that discomfort within the other being's body within their energy grid and they're going to know when they're being disincere they're going to feel the blockages of other people before they even know they have blockages because they can feel into their energy body their light bodies so you tend to develop a bs detector if you're an indigo child and if you're a starseed child, it depends on where you've been or where you resided before you incarnated on Earth. You'll often bring back the abilities that you've had when you resided in the location that you used to live in, be it the Pleiades or any other star system or solar system. And that's another thing. In other dimensions, in other points of space, say for example the moon in another dimension, it actually has inhabitants. There are places within our space of 3D already, once you shift the frequency and go into a parallel dimension, whether it be an astral dimension or another dimension, you'll find other existences inhabiting that point of space. And it may not even be on a round circular globe, because I'm going completely off topic. Kind of, you can kind of relate if you live there, right? If, if you're a star seed, this kind of resonates with you. It's not a round circular globe in some places where we live. There was a place where I lived before I incarnated on Earth, which was completely flat. The dimensional space, the laws that govern that parallel universe or that dimensional realm is not the same as in 3D. Not everything is bound by gravity and so forth. Here's one. For those of you who are thinkers out there and less verbalists, it took me a while to learn how to speak properly through camera and how to communicate to people, okay? But I'm going to tell you what was going through my head when I was being judged by people who didn't quite understand what I was going through. Ryan's speech is very unclear and incoherent. He becomes frustrated if he is not understood and often resorts to pointing his fingers. When we come from these planes of existences, the higher dimensions of thought, important, thought, we don't speak English, we don't even use vocabulary or words, we just go completely or feeling. This is for the star seeds out there. This is how we communicate. This is still how I communicate in the astral realms. So, when we come in on Earth and we, we're, we're told to speak a certain way, a book is thrown in front of our face and we're told this is how to do it, there is some resistance there because it's not what we're used to. We're used to being empathically intelligent. We're used to feeling emotions and using that telepathy. Noticing information from a distance telepathy is what I'm talking about. Not the words inside your head that you hear, but the feeling, the emotion. We're used to using that to communicate within the other dimensions because we're not used to using words because we've never been physical before. So it's hard for us to grasp a language early on and it takes us often sometimes five to six or even seven years until we actually start speaking to other people because we're going around and we're feeling everyone's energy and that's how we communicate. And yet we're being told to do it another way and that's where the confusion comes from. It's a deep remembrance that this isn't how it should be, that this isn't how it is, that this isn't how we're used to operating when it comes to communicating, and thus it's becoming quite difficult. But if this was told to us as a kid that, hey, the other dimension that you was in, you spoke differently, and that's why you're having a hard time adjusting, and some sort of educational rehabilitation was put in place for us to really express this emotion that we're used to cultivating and sending from a distance and bringing it up into our vocal cords and speaking in these words, then it would be easier. But a lot of people like us often don't develop this skill until later on in life when we study ourselves and become our own teachers of obviously what we need to do in order to communicate efficiently. So learn by listening to yourself. Know that this isn't the norm in which you communicate. If you're shy out there and you don't often speak, and understand that other people may get completely confused and their insecurities may come up if they realize, especially if you're in a relationship, that you are not communicating effectively because they're used to communicating on a 3D sense, whereas you're just not used to it. And it can start some confusion. Technology. Ryan likes to work on his own. He builds excellent imaginative models with the... Mobilo? Mobilo, I'm guessing it's a certain type of or toy within the area. I remember using it as shapes and you build them together to create something. Often something which most people couldn't often see 
for example, if your third eye is open, you'll see faces and things. So I'd often get shapes and I'd put them together to better exaggerate or show the face that I can see so that the people around me can see it. That's another thing. If you can see faces in things, that means that your indigo energy, that vibration of color, that frequency that determines the way that your brain waves are thinking and operating, then that can suggest that you are an indigo. Now real quick, just so that I can sum this up so you, that you really, really understand what I'm talking about. I'm sure you've all heard of this. When you see color, it brings up a certain emotion, thus changes the way that you think. There is real science in this. There's a thing to this. If you see yellow, it, it brings up enjoyment and creativity. When you see color, it literally changes your thought patterns. But a lot of people don't realize that it's also the opposite way. If you just sit with the feeling within your body and you try to attach it to a color, your third eye or your imaginative area, which allows you to make sense of your own emotional input, your own, your own emotional library, your own emotional content, will literally bring up a color that's better suited to how you feel. Right now I'm feeling browns and very, very dark purples and some blacks. But a lot of people who aren't into this kind of thing just completely bypass it. They, they completely just ignorantly ignore it. And yet they're being manipulated all the time. There are certain colors such as green and yellow which get you to buy more things. Bet you didn't know that, but the people in the advertisement industry all know this. And they all change their advertisement, especially towards Christmas with the reds and the greens. And they do this on purpose because they automatically, subconsciously shift your patterns of thinking in order to get you to spend more money. So if you're not aware of this, you're being controlled. It's one of those things. You have to be aware of it to stop it from controlling you. Otherwise, you're kind of at the mercy of everyone else who has this information. So the indigo or the violet energy, if you're constantly resonating or you're thinking or you're becoming aware of all this hidden knowledge of all these ways of manipulation and you're able to see that BS detector through people, and then you close your eyes and you try to attach that feeling, that thinking pattern, that resonancy that you're always thinking at to a color, you'll most likely feel purple or violet. And that is a sign, a clear indication, especially if you're born that way, that you've got a larger output of that violet frequency, which suggests that your soul is resonating on a much more broader range or spectrum of light. And it contains more of that violet frequency, which allows you to have these perception abilities. Now, this doesn't mean that you cannot change the way you are at the moment by painting your room purple and wearing purple clothing. This does have the same effect when it comes to opening your chakras or your perceptual awareness of how things actually are or looking through the veil or seeing through the matrix, so to speak. Now, this has been a very long video. I didn't actually cover everything that I wanted to cover, so I may actually do a part two. I'm Ryan JC. This has been the difference between an indigo and a star seed. Are you an indigo? Are you a star seed? And now you know the dynamics between the two. You know how they think differently and you can better make an accurate decision as to which category you may fit into. I'm Ryan JC, a star seed. And I'll speak to you guys pretty soon.